uh, okay uh, then the significance of separation of powers uh, whenever a large power is given in the hand of any administering authority there are higher chances of maladministration corruption and misuse of this power so this doctrine helps to prevent the abuse of power and it protect the individual from arbitrary rule so this is the significance of separation of powers next is the history of separation of powers Separation of power is a model for the governance of uh, both democratic and federative state, which was first developed in ancient Greece and came into widespread use by the Roman Republic part of its codified constitution. And in 16th and 17th century, French philosopher John Bodin and British politician Locke expressed their views about the theory of this separation of powers. So its origin is traceable to Plato and Aristotle. It was Aristotle who was uh, for the first time classified these functions of the government into three categories. That is, uh, first one is deliberative, uh, second is uh, magisterial and judicial. Then Montesquieu formulated this doctrine of separation of powers and it was a scientific and systematic formulation. This is all about the history of separation of powers. And uh, next is the Wade and Phillips theory of separation of powers. This theory implies uh, certain points that the same person should not form uh, part of more than one of the three organs of the government. And the second one is one organ of the government should not interfere with any other organ of the government. And the third one is one organ of the government should not exercise the functions assigned to any other organ so this theory ha has had different application in usa england and india this is the wade and phillips theory of separation of powers and uh, uh, we are moving on to separation of powers uh, uh, in usa the principle of separation of powers finds a good mention in the constitution of usa while the federal constitution of the u.s doesn't uh, expressly provides for the separation of powers in American constitution, we find that uh, legislative, executive and judicial powers are there. Uh, they are separate entities and section 1 of article 1 states that all legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of United States. And uh, section 1 of article 2 states that the executive power shall be vested in a president of the USA. And the third one is section 1 of article 3. The judicial power of U.S. shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. Uh, so these are all the separation of powers in USA. And uh, the characteristics of uh, U.S. separation of power is that uh, they have the presidential form of government. The form of government uh, characterized as presidential is based on the theory of separation of uh, separation between the executive and legislature and the president being both the head of the state as well as its chief executive appoints and dismisses other executive officers and thereby controls the policies and actions of the government uh, departments. And the person in charge of uh, various departments designated as the secretary of the state holds the office at his pleasure and the ultimate decision rests with the president and the uh, separation is maintained between these uh, legislative and executive organs uh, which whereby uh, neither the president nor any member of the executive is a member of the congress and this system of government is fundamentally uh, different from the indian parliamentary system the, this is the characteristics of usa uh, separation of power and uh, there are uh, certain principles, that is the principle of checks and balances, uh, which is an exception to the doctrine of separation of power. It, uh, the principle of checks and balances is, uh, which means that the system provides each branch of government with individual powers to check the other branches and prevent anyone uh, any one branch from becoming too powerful that is for example the congress has the power to create laws and president has the power to veto them and the supreme court may declare the laws and constitutional so the congress consists of two houses the senate and the house of representatives and can override the presidential veto with uh, two by three vote in both houses and this checks and balance system also provide the branches with some power to appoint or remove members from the other branches and uh, Congress can impeach and convict the president for uh, high crimes like uh, treason and bribery. And the House of Representatives has the power to impeach the president. And Senate has the power to convict and remove the president from the office. And in addition to this, the Supreme Court candidates are uh, appointed by the president and are confirmed by the Senate. And the judges can be removed from office by impeachment in the House of Representatives and, uh, co and its conviction in the Senate. So uh, this is the principle of checks and balance. Uh, we can uh, uh, from this we can know that, uh, that it is an exception to doctrine of separation of powers and next is uh, separation of powers in uh, france before moving on to this uh, the government of france uh, 
is uh, which consists of a semi presidential system or dual executive system the president exercises a prime minister and cabinet and later being uh, responsible to legislature of the state and it differs from the presidential system in that the cabinet all the named by the president is responsible to the legislature and semi presidential system is determined by the french constitution of the fifth french republic and the nation declares itself to be an indivisible secular democratic and social republic. public and uh, the doctrine of separation of power in france even though france is credited with uh, giving origin to this doctrine it recognizes this uh, this doctrine in its constitution in a flexible manner article 1 and 2 separates the legislature from the executive uh, eminent feature of this doctrine is uh, reflected in its dual court system wherein one kind of court deals with all the civil matters and another kind deals with the administrative matters and french administration is also consists of uh, the three organs uh, legislative executive and judiciary and legislature makes uh, laws uh, executive implement these laws like us and but uh, the executive by exercising veto to prevent a particular law from being uh, passed keeps a checks on the legislature and judiciary to has a power to determine the constitutionality of the laws passed by the legislature and legislative branch also has a power to remove a president or judge if they are uh, doing the duties of their job right and this is the doctrine of separation of power in france next the doctrine of separation of power in uk uh, in uh, uk the absence of a written constitution there is no formal separation of this powers and hence no act of parliament may be held to be unconstitutional if any power is conferred in breach of the doctrine and uh, the executive uh, consists of crown and the government including the prime minister cabinet of ministers and also the civil service it formulates and executes the government policies and the government is accountable to the parliament which has the ultimate power to dismiss a government and force a general election in which the new government will be elected and the government is mainly elected from the members of the parliament who sit in either house of uh, common or house of lords uh, that are the two houses uh, and and the legislative power in uh, uk it is held by the parliament which is composed of the monarch house of lords and house of commons and monarch has only nominal powers and mainly has to listen to the uh, advice of the prime minister and house of commons consists of elected members of parliament house of lord, uh, lords consists of unelected hereditary peers and life peers uh, appointed by the crown and archbishops and bishops of the church of england but house of commons is superior to house of lords uh, in uh, in the case of law making and uh, main function of the parliament uh, is to create or amend law scrutinize the government and enable the uh, government to make financial decisions next the judicial power uh, of the um, uk uh, that is main function of the judici uh, judiciary is to hear upon and resolve the matters of law and one essential function is to develop the law through their judgments and judiciary consists of judges in courts as well as those who hold the judicial office in and tribunals uh, uh, senior judicial appointments are made by the crown and their independence is protected in the act of settlement uh, uh, 1700 according to which senior judges can only be dismissed by address to the crown from both houses of the parliament and next is uh, uh, the lord chancellor it is the most peculiar feature of uk and he was part of uh, all three branches of the government prior to the constitutional reform act 2005 he acted as the head of the judiciary was a member of cabinet and presided over the house of lords as its speaker but uh, in future the lord chancellor will be uh, can be a part of either of the houses and constitutional reform act 2005 led the british government towards having a clearer division among these powers and next one is uh, doctrine of separation of powers in india uh, there are certain uh, relevant provision in constitution which are dealing with the separation of powers uh, uh, that are uh, article 50 which state uh, uh, state shall uh, take step to uh, separate the judiciary from the executive and this is to ensure the independence of the judiciary next one is article 122 and 212 Uh, this uh, states about the validity of proceedings in parliament and the legislature cannot be called into question in any court this is ensures the separation of legislature from the judiciary and article 53 and 154 respectively provides that the executive power of the union and the state shall be vested with the president and the governor and they enjoy immunity from civil and criminal liability
and article uh, 361 which states that president or the governor shall not be answerable to any court for the exercise and performance of the powers and duties of the office these are the relevant provisions of constitution relating to separation of powers or a separation of the organs uh next one is uh, our legislature legislature consists of a uh, council of ministers elected from the legislature and exercising judicial powers in cases of breach of its privileges impeachment of the president uh, under article 61 and removal of judges legislative body has the punitive power under article uh, 105 3 and the executive consists of president of india supreme executive authority in india who has the uh, law making power in the form of ordinance making power under article 123 and judicial power under article 103 clause 1 and the article uh, 217 clause 3 he has the consulting power to the uh, supreme court of india under article 143 and also the pardoning power under article 72 of the constitution and they also make appointments to the office of chief justice of india and other judges next one is the judiciary article 145 uh, gives the rule making function of the judiciary where it performs the role of the executive and article 142 constitution has the power to uh, power to the uh, apex court for complete justice in the case of case or matter so there is a complete shifting from the ordinary powers and thereby weakening the doctrine in its uh, strict sense and even the power to amend the constitution by parliament is subject to the scrutiny of the court court can declare any amendment void if it changes the basic structure of the uh, uh, constitution and these are uh, the three organs of uh, our country and uh, next and finally uh, there are certain uh, judicial pronouncement on separation of powers Uh, the first one is ram jevaya kapoor versus state of punjab in this the supreme court held that indian constitution hasn't recognized the doctrine in its absolute uh, rigidity because uh, it is not rigid but the three branches of the government have been sufficiently differentiated and next one is indira nehru gandhi versus raj nare in this case uh, observed that even in the indian constitution there is separation of powers in a broad sense only and the rigid separation of powers as under uh, american constitution or australian constitution does not apply to india next is keshavanta bharathi versus state of uh, kerala and Add, it added that the separation of powers is a part of the basic structure of the constitution and uh, in ic golaknath versus state of punjab justice uh, subravu opined that uh, the uh, constitution brought different constitutional entities into existence namely the union the state and unit that there is it created the three organs of the government they are expected to exercise their uh, respective powers without overstepping their limits um, and uh, bandha mukti morcha versus union of india in this case constitution envisages a uh, broad division of this power of state between three organs and although this division is not precisely demarcated and there is a general acknowledgement of its limits and finally the supreme court employees welfare association versus union of india it was held that held no court can issue a direction to legislature to enact a particular uh, law neither it can direct an executive authority to enact a law which it has been empowered to do under the delegated legislative authority uh, this is all, all about uh, the review uh, thank you all thank you sir